Welcome to the tropical belt. This is the story of tropical music. My name is David Fanshaw. I'm a composer and an explorer. And I'd like to take you on a musical adventure into the tropics. We'll circumnavigate the equator from Australia to Southeast Asia, South India to East and West Africa, across the Caribbean and Latin America, and around to the islands of the Pacific. Our journey begins in the Torres Strait Islands between Australia and Papua New Guinea. This is home to one of the oldest continuous cultures on Earth. sound. Stick against stick, hand on skin, bare feet stamping on ground, the rattle of shells. Instruments soon became an extension of the human voice. This bamboo harp from Saibai Island uses the mouth as a resonator. Handpipes extended the breath and created new melodic sounds. the Torres Strait Islanders were headhunters with cannibal enemies across the waters in Papua New Guinea. Their music fired up the warriors for battle, to celebrate victory or to mourn defeat. Fundamental cycles of life have always been the motivations for making music, like birth, death, and war. The movement of music around the tropics has been carried by the major oceans and rivers of the world through trade and migration. The Mekong River flows through six countries. It's the cultural lifeline through this part of Southeast Asia. In northern Laos, on the edge of the Golden Triangle, the people here are preparing to celebrate their new year. And we're here to record the festivities. accompanied by a rudimentary two-stringed fiddle called the saw. The saw is one of the earliest attempts to create a harmonic sound by tying animal gut between two pegs. This is the center of the main celebration, the ancient capital of Laos, Luang Prabang. It's the Buddhist New Year, the year 2538. On the road to enlightenment, Lord Buddha's body was washed by his devotees. 
Today, they honor Buddha by splashing water on the monks. Laos is a mixture of Buddhist and animist beliefs. This festival celebrates both. We're so lucky to be here. It's a musicologist's field day discovering such a plethora of instruments, from gongs made out of brass to percussion made out of bamboo. In fact, bamboo is the most widely used material for making musical instruments right across the tropics. And this is the most widely heard instrument. It's called the ken. There are 20 different ethnic groups that comprise the Lao people, and it seems every one of them has come down river for the celebration. This mountain group is called the Hamong. They play a more primitive version of the Ken, with only six notes. It sounds like a cross between a bagpipe and a mouth organ. The Mekong is the longest river in Southeast Asia. It's a source of musical inspiration for the many cultures that live along its banks. Further up river is another tribal group called the Kamu, who late into the night were still celebrating with music and dance. They have an even more developed bamboo ken. This one has 20 notes. It's the main melodic instrument that accompanies their song and dance. people live in Laos, but another 15 million Lao people live across the river in Thailand. Over in Thailand, there is another rich array of tribes to record. One group we've heard a lot about are called the Sek, who migrated down river from North Vietnam over 200 years ago. Today, they're renowned for their ankle-endangering dance. And once again, the sound of the ken enhances the entertainment. Music of the Ken predominates out in the villages, but in the cities, in the refined atmosphere of the old imperial courts, more complex classical instruments developed. 
like those accompanying this spirit bird dance, finely tuned xylophones, zither and gongs. of precision instruments is what distinguishes tribal and folk music from the more classical traditions. And by following our tropical song lines into southern India, we hope to find much more of this classical art form. There are two Indias when it comes to music. The music of the north was profoundly influenced by 500 years of Persian occupation. Here in the tropical south, the music remains relatively unchanged. So here we are in the state of Karnataka, and the capital is Bangalore. We want to start by recording the oldest string instruments of the south. Welcome to Bangalore, India. As old as the Hindu religion itself is the Veena, seen here with the goddess of learning and wisdom, Saraswati. And this is the Saraswati Veena. The Veena has an amazing amount of strings, four melody and three rhythm strings, and a set of resonating strings beneath the fretboard. Out in the street, the string instruments are a bit less sophisticated. This one, played by a snake charmer, may not have the subtlety of the vena, but the cobra seems impressed enough. Life in India has been affected by so many factors that their musical traditions have withstood the burdens of religious wars, trade, the British Raj, and wallahs like me. <laughs> Colonialism introduced the violin, and the playing method has been adapted to suit Indian requirements, which includes sitting on the floor. that makes Indian music so distinct are these fret movements called gamakas. Can you just demonstrate what is a gamaka? All right. Yeah. And, and note the instrument is here on your oh, yeah. ankle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, sit cross -leg, we sit cross-legged and hold the violin like this. Now, first I play the plain note and then gamaka. Western scale. Western scale. Of Western major scale, major. right? <laughs> but we play the same note in a different manner, right? With yeah. the gamaka. I, I need to get 
the Mahatma Gandhi Road. Along with the Gamaka hand movement, another distinguishing feature of Indian music is the complex drum rhythms called talas. The drum shops in Bangalore make drums that will play just about every tala, from the north and the south. The drums are made of buffalo, cow and goat hide. And they vary the pitch of each one by applying a mixture of magnesium and sticky rice. The drum that is used most in the south is the murdangam, here accompanying a classical dance dedicated to the god Nataraja. The instruments continuously support me with what I'm doing, like the murdangam or the drum that you saw is constantly giving me the beats that I need for the dance. So it's it's a relationship between the drummer and the dancer, going into different speeds, uh, coming back into different complicated rhythms, etc. So there's a constant relationship between the drummer and the dancer. And even the Natuangam, the singer who was singing and he was, she was playing the Natuangam, that also gives me the beat. Almost anything can be adapted to produce music. A simple clay pot, when played like this, produces beautifully delicate sounds. By using some of the sounds, we use this thumb finger. And for joining both the hands, you get a uh, different sound. And this is to make the sound much more effective. And while joining all the things, India is one of the most populous nations on earth, rapidly approaching a billion. 80% of Indians are Hindu. But there are still a few pockets of tribal people almost untouched by outside influences in the hills of India. We're interested in recording one such Aboriginal tribe called the Soligar, who live in a remote mountain range to the south of Bangalore. The Soligar have a few basic instruments, like this frame drum called tamate. This is so rare, you know, to find such a strong living culture which these people hold so dear. children hold the key to the survival of this music and to the mythology surrounding it. Survival of their music means survival of their culture. Because Soligar traditions are still being passed on from one generation to another through song and dance. A teacher names 300 species of trees in their forest and the girls sing in response, Yes, that tree is my god and I will protect it.
From a culture that's had little influence from the outside world, we move across the Indian Ocean to a culture almost entirely created by outside influences. Off the east coast of Africa is the fabled island of Zanzibar. Listen to their music and you'll hear the island's history. From the courts of Omani sultans to the Arab slave traders, centuries of British and German military bands mix these days with a bit of Bombay film music. The most popular style is called Tarab, with orchestra, chorus, soloist and featuring the Arab zither called Garnoon. the music of the dance halls, then Benny is the music of the Zanzibar streets. Benny music evolved from colonial brass bands, and today it's performed on festive occasions. On the mainland of Tanzania, tribal life is much less influenced by foreign customs. Each tribe has its own distinct culture and often its own homemade instruments. One instrument common throughout East Africa is the thumb piano. In Tanzania, they call it milimba. It's a simple wooden box with keys made of flattened nails and beautifully played here by the great Wagogo exponent and teacher, Zawoze. million mouths to feed, this socialist country is undergoing some radical transitions. Tanzania is a very fertile land and its people are successful farmers of cattle and maize. Their enthusiasm for traditional music is typical of the rich musical heritage found in Africa, the roots of so much world music. In one afternoon, they produce no less than a dozen different instruments made entirely in the village. This 
three strings of Zeze is remarkably similar to the strings we've discovered in India and in Laos. folk music like this only because of the expert cultural advisors we managed to secure in each country. And is that Gogo country? Yeah, this is Gogo country. Near the Domo. Our Tanzanian guide leads us on to an extraordinary harvest celebration and a meeting with another musical expert from the area. There are the Wagogo tribe are renowned for their very special music. What is so unique about their Music. Traditionally, the Wagogo have got very beautiful voice. It's through their voice that make melodies. It is even when you are greeting someone you haven't seen for a long time, they they pass words to each other as if they are singing, you know, and they would ask about your father, your mother, your son, your daughters your hens, your goats, your cows, what are you eating, if you put anything. It's, and the other ones keep saying, mm, mm. So even the greeting is some sort of melody. And when they sing, they don't depend much on drumming, a lot of drumming, they depend on their voice. This is a Wagogo courtship dance called Mususunyo. They can go off into the bush discreetly, whilst the others continue singing, and the women make that wonderful cry, ululating. The dancing went on until dawn, but we had to keep moving west this time across the equator to the Atlantic coast. In the Tropic of Cancer is the former French West African colony, Senegal. It's a beautiful country at the bottom of the Sahara. But the desert is creeping south at an alarming rate of 10 kilometers a year, and water is increasingly harder to get for livestock and vegetation. This time, our expert is the famous Senegalese musician, Boubaka. Bro, nice to see you. Oh, fine. Great to see you in Senegal. Now living in Australia, Boubaka has returned to his roots to reconnect with his family and to make a video clip for his new CD. Please, man. Welcome home. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. You look great, man. Bubaka agreed to take us round Senegal in exchange for help with his filming. 
He says that if Zanzibar is famous for its strings and Tanzania for its voices, then Senegal has its heart in the drum. Our first stop is to meet the talking drum, known as the Tama. This is West Africa's smallest drum, but Bubaka says it's also the sexiest, and few people can resist its beat. These strings can alter the tension on the lizard skin as the drummer plays it, squeezing it under his arm. saying, you're the one who makes me feel happy because of the way you wiggle your bum. In Senegal, the beat is in everything. In the more tropical south, it's as much a part of life as the harvest itself. Senegal has a mix of Islam and Christianity, but these villagers follow ancient animist beliefs, as with this spirit dance driven by the sound of the balafon, their native xylophone. Its tropical hardwood keys have resonating gourds attached underneath. And its music has the power to possess. The woman is being anchored down with earth, so the spirit will not come down and take her soul away. rhythms and accompanied by my new laptop palafon, we venture into the heart of Senegal. It's a country of nine million people on a land mass about the size of England, where tribal beliefs live side by side with the major religions. The market town of Darumusti is home of the Baifal sect of Islam, and today is Margal, their main festival. <laughs> Devotees have come from all over West Africa to pay their respects and to sing. This is something rarely seen by the outside world. Their present leader is revered for his work with orphan children. He is their living prophet, Kara Mbake.
Finally, on the coast, in the capital city of Dakar, Bubaka is home with his own people, the Great Wolof tribe, the largest in the country. Each major tribe has its own musical signatures. For Bubaka's family, it's a rhythm called Asiko. their lead drum, called djembe, backed by percussion of all shapes and sizes, each with its own hypnotic rhythm that captures the seafaring spirit of these coastal peoples. Bubaka was born on an island just off the African coast called Gore. Is that where you learn to play the djembe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where come from. Its tranquil elegance and beautifully restored buildings hide the ghost of an ugly past. Bubaka's family have lived here for generations. But for 400 years, Gore was the main slaving center of Senegal and many of his people were captured by the slave traders. This is the old slave house, now a museum, where almost a quarter of a million slaves were chained until they were sold off and herded out through this door onto the ships waiting to take them west, onto the Americas, to the Caribbean, to Cuba. In Cuba, African musical traditions fused with Spanish traditions. The indigenous music had been previously annihilated by the conquistadors. African rituals evolved with the outside influences from Spanish flamenco, guitars, military bands, even breakdown. years Cuba was a Spanish colony and then for 50 years it was dominated by American interests. The Castro revolution in 1959 resulted in a communist government which encouraged the intermingling of Spanish and African cultures. Incredible as it may seem, this started as a small religious ceremony, but within 15 minutes, quite spontaneously, about 3,000 people joined in. Originally, these slaves weren't allowed to take their drums from Africa, so in Cuba they created new ones from memory.
One more instrument which has evolved since its arrival on the island is the Spanish guitar. But the romance of Spain is still alive in Cuban compositions like this famed love song called The Discreet Kiss. <laughs> has been played in Cuba and is still played in Cuba today just as it was in Spain as a guitar but it has also developed new typologies of instruments and, uh, and perhaps in Cuba the most important one is the tres and it has three pairs of strings I mean three double strings if you count the strings there are six strings two but there are only three sounds coming up, uh, out of them because they are always playing two by two called Sone, which developed in the countryside on the east coast of the island. It became internationally recognized as the root of the cha-cha-cha and later the salsa. drums that have been born in Cuba uh, and that have gained an international acceptance uh, today. One is the tumbadora, also known as conga drums, and the bongo.